Guys, I received a request to discuss the subject from Venga de Krishna in a recent email message. What I'd like to explain to you is the difference between a bad circulating thermal siphon reboiler and a good once through reboiler. Now, the reboiler functions as the bottom theoretical stage of the tower. It's a fractionation stage, but it is a more powerful, a more efficient fractionation stage than any individual tray. Why? Because you put heat in to the reboiler, you put heat into the bottom theoretical stage of the tower. And this makes that fractionation stage work a lot more powerfully than a simple tray that only mixes the vapor and liquid together. You could see this for yourself, either in the field or in a computer simulation, based upon the relative temperature increase across the tray as compared to the temperature increase across the reboiler. The temperature increase across the reboiler is far larger than the temperature increase across an individual tray. Hence, the degree of fractionation that corresponds to the temperature change is also much greater on the reboiler than in the individual fractionation tray. Now, in a bed circulating thermal siphon reboiler, the liquid comes off the bottom tray. Most of the liquid comes off the bottom tray and falls to the bottom of the tower and flows into the reboiler, which is partially vaporized, which is fine. But far part of the liquid from the bottom tray bypasses the bottom theoretical stage of the tower. It bypasses the reboiler. It bypasses the bottom theoretical stage of the tower, which represents the reboiler. Thus, I hope you could see that a circulating thermal siphon reboiler, which bypasses, to some extent, the bottom's product around the bottom theoretical stage of the tower is inherently more inefficient than a good once through thermal siphon reboiler. Again, if this was just an ordinary fractionation stage, it wouldn't matter that much. But the reboiler, because we put heat into the theoretical stage, works as a super fractionation stage and contributes a large degree of fractionation to the tower. What then is the good once through thermal siphon reboiler? In the good once through thermal siphon reboiler, not some, but all of the liquid from the bottom tray flows to the reboiler. The reboiler effluent is partially vaporized. The vapor and liquid both return to the tower together. The vapor goes up the tower stripping vapor. But the liquid portion of the reboiler effluent in the good once through thermal siphon reboiler is nothing more and nothing less then the bottom theoretical stage of the tower, this is the reboiler, that's the bottom theoretical stage of the tower, and all of the liquid that forms the bottom product has therefore passed through the bottom theoretical stage of the tower that is represented by the good once through thermal siphon reboiler. Now, your computer simulation always, always makes the assumption that the bottom theoretical stage of the tower is the reboiler. But in saying all this, I've made an assumption that is often unwarranted. I have assumed the bottom tray is not leaking. And if the bottom tray is not a bubble cap tray, if the bottom tray is not a total trap out chimney tray, which it usually is not, if the bottom tray is a perforated tray, such as a valve tray, or a grid tray, or a sieve tray, then the bottom tray is subject to leakage. And therefore, some of the liquid that forms the bottom product, unfortunately, has leaked through the bottom tray directly to the bottom of the tower, and therefore bypasses the bottom theoretical stage as represented by the once through thermal siphon reboiler. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I always try to design the bottom tray of the tower, not as a perforated tray, 
a valve tray or a grid tray or a sieve tray, but I always try to design it as a total trap out chimney tray because the tall trap out chimney tray forces all of the liquid flowing from the bottom of the tower to flow directly to the reboiler. Now, I will admit in binary fractionation, you know, like propane, butane, or isobutane, normal butane, that sort of binary fractionation, it doesn't matter that much. But I could assure you, based upon long personal experience, that in a naphtha splitter or a cat cracker debutanizer, towers that I've had long experience, that if you design the tower as a once through thermal siphon reboiler, but you run it as a circulating thermal siphon reboiler, and that the bottom tray leaks a lot, then you are going to lose quite a bit of fractionation efficiency. And again, you could see this for yourself on your computer simulation, simply compare the amount of butane in the feed to the reboiler as compared to the butane in the bottom's product and see in this debutanizer how much fractionation efficiency you're going to lose if you design the tower as a once through thermal siphon reboiler which you must on your computer simulation but you run it as a circulating thermal siphon reboiler by allowing the liquid from the bottom tray to partially bypass the bottom theoretical stage of the tower, the reboiler. One clarification, ladies and gentlemen, that is the liquid from the seal pan must overflow the top edge of the seal pan into the drawer off or trap out pan to feed the reboiler as shown on my sketch.